Cross River State, located in the southern region of Nigeria with a population of 371,000 people and was once heralded as Nigeria's number one tourist destination. Known for its well-kept lawns and greenery, home to the biggest street party in Africa, the world's richest mountain race tournament, the first federal capital city of Nigeria, but not anymore. I know this channel is dedicated to showing you some of the best destinations, promoting countries, cultures and people. I'm sorry, but this video has to be different. But hey man, sometimes I just have to say the truth. This country has to work. It's high time we start holding these politicians to their campaign promises. Not just because I just want to show validation or anything, but because I care about my country. I, I just want to hold some people accountable and say things as it is, and that's what we have this platform for, right? I would appreciate if you can hit the like button for the algorithm. Thank you so much. Poor leadership and corruption has eaten up the future and wealth of the state. The greenery is fast disappearing into heaps of litter. So if you drive on the streets of Calabar, oh shit, this thing smells like fuck. The streets are pitch black at night and filthy during the day. Nigeria's tourism capital has fallen. The city now looks like paradise lost. I visited to find out what really happened. You see, this state is actually sitting on a gold mine because it's called the people's paradise. Because it's a paradise. They lush greenery everywhere. Look at just, I don't know, man, you can see aerial shot. Tell me what you think. We're sitting on a gold mine that has been run down because of selfish politicians greedy politicians why okay we don't have libraries we don't have cinemas wow we don't have recreational parks and you can see the decadence in the society so look at the state library dead it's broken broken in this video i'm going to talk about why nigeria's favorite tourism destination is gradually fading away or has faded already and i know a lot of people watching this video would relate with me because it's the truth. This is the Obudu Katu Ranch, and uh, I had to visit here for myself, you know. It's somewhere in Cross River State and it rises up to about 5,000 feet above sea level. Right here, the atmosphere, the temperature is, di is different. The temperature can go as low as 17 degrees. It's tell you that uh, you are having that East African vibes right here in West Africa, you know. The resort was created many years ago in 1951, but it was Donald Duke administration between 1999 and 2007 who upgraded it to the world standard. His goal was to turn it to Africa's largest and most beautiful tourist destination that would attract thousands of tourists and boost the tourism earnings in the state. And since then, no major upgrade has been done, no improvements in facilities have been done. As a matter of fact, the administrations that came in after him totally abandoned this and they had different ulterior motives, you know. The resort used to feature a water park that has ceased to function. A 100 meter swing bridge canopy walkway suspended above the forest. A cable car ride from the bottom hill to the mountain top that has been packed up. An intestinal road, popularly called the Devil's Elbow. 
The road network is spiral and gives it a zigzag scary view from the top. I visited the ranch to see it for myself, but sadly, there's a story of abject neglect by administrations after Donald Duke. The buildings are dilapidated. I'm at the cable car station. The cable car was introduced by Donald Duke as a way to commute people from the bottom hill of the ranch to the upper hill. So, I mean, we are here right now, but everywhere looks dusty and uh, we're visiting the ranch. We couldn't access this because we, 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 they, they told us that it's not working. So what actually happened? The cable car right now is working. It's working? It's working. Nothing happened to it. But the reason why you see everywhere it dust is because of the, the people who are working here. Mm. They're on strike. They're because, on strike? Yes, because the money the cable can normally generate, they normally go to a uh, government account. So government have not been paid them. So they now go on strike. It's over almost about uh, four years. So they've been on strike for four years? Four years. It costs about 2,500 Naira back in 2006, 2007. For the fucking week, we have like 5,000 people coming. Fast forward to 2022, there's nobody there and everybody's on strike, you know? When the cable car was functioning, people right from outside the country, Ghana, Australia, Egypt, Cameroon, American, people were coming. But now the cable car is not for that functioning. Nothing is working as before. They only make use of it. Anytime the governor come, they will come. They will try and see if they can bring the cable car out to encourage the governor to pay them. But still, but still they're not going to pay the money. Yeah. From, from what I was told, they make this money, they repute it to the government. These people take the money and put it in their pockets. They are not going to use the money for the betterment of these activities. And then, obviously, when it happens for a while, it's going to shut down. Forget about the government for now. We need Big Brothers Africa to come and put this place in order. Don't spend money over there, spend money here. Because actually here is an international tourism area that we have worldwide that we're coming. South Africa, America, and everybody comes around here. You get I me? Mean? People come for camping. We, we, we got the Cross River National Park. We got the reserve. We got everywhere. The water park, everything was functioning. But now everything is just kaput. It's all in our hands, this life of time That's given to us all One of the many activities introduced by the Donald Duke administration was the Obudu Mountain Race that attracted top runners in the world. The race was known to be the world's richest mountain race because it has the largest total prize money available for any mountain race. This attracted foreigners and investors to the state and the ranch in particular. With every field and rising sea. But corruption and lack of vision made administrations after Donald Duke killed the event and eventually destroyed the ranch. So yeah, the situation here is uh, it's, it's really bad. It's not terrible, but it, it's bad, I would say, because the temperature here, it's pretty cold at, you know, 17 degrees, you know? So they're going to tell you that there's hot water in the room. Well, there's actually no hot water because they had to fetch water to us. And then, the, I don't know, the water supply to the room wasn't coming up. And the electricity went, the electricity was just on for, I think, about an hour, 30 minutes. And then it went off. And uh, my gears are actually running low. My, my stuff are not properly charged, you know? As of right now, it's actually going down and uh, the place is getting worse and you know it creates like a multiplier effect because if one person comes here to visit this place and you know the person has like a very terrible experience of course you're going to go and tell your friends that hey man this place is terrible don't come here anymore i actually plan to stay here for two nights but i'm so sorry i cannot stay here for another 24 hours i don't know who server is watching this video if you're in the position to do something but something definitely has to be done to revamp this place to bring it back to its past glory i mean a lot of things happen here the government is not making it attractive because that's why people are not more coming here again in this time you will see whites all the holy houses all white will fill all over but now they are nothing even the we blacks you cannot see uh, them here again those who are working as the staff here at the hotel immediately you paid uh, the the accommodation 
they will collect the money all and take it down. Then the workers here will stand, uh, stand. Then how can I be working with that money? From what this gentleman has said, he's a native here. He lives here. So the resort doesn't function on its own. It is functioning as a government property where people come here, pay money to stay in one of the chalets, and then the money, do, the money doesn't stay in the resort. It goes to the government. So because it goes to the government, that is where the corruption starts. As he mentioned, the essay to tourism, I'm going to find his picture and put it here. They said they take this money, put it in their pocket. And of course, if you're not putting back money into the business, it's eventually going to die. The potential of Obudu remains untapped and unexplored. Obudu Kati Ranch needs to be saved. This is Tinapar, an 80,000 square meters leisure and business resort with a futuristic film studio, luxury malls, luxury shops, and elevated light railway. Tinapar should be a showcase of Nigeria's dynamism, a commercial hub for West Africa, racking in millions of dollars. But 15 years after it opened, the resort has turned a ghost town and has become a symbol of monumental waste. So this area was initially created to, you know, entertain people, right? They have a lazy river, they have a pool, they have a slide. You know, they have bars, you have, you know, a volleyball, volleyball spot as well, you know, and all in one place for both adults and children, you know. This, this place was created to, you know, make sure people come here and have that aquatic experience and Fast forward how many years later, maybe 10 years, uh, administrations after Donald Duke, they all lost interest, man. You can see aerial views of Tinapa. It's, it's quiet, not a single person here, and uh, it's gradually dying, you know. The cinema studio has likewise been unable to attract Nollywood stars who have largely preferred to stay in Lagos. This whole area was called, or is called, Studio Tinapa, right? Created to invite, you know, the top movie directors or um, producers in the world so they could come and expose Cross River or Calabar to the world, right? Right here, you have a mini theater that we are at right now. Usually would have performance right here. As you can see, it has like a stadium type of setup. You had like a studio inside, uh, inside this center right here, you had like a mini broadcasting radio and TV station right here. This place was going to be like a hub for, you know, broadcasting cross river to the wall. But of course, you know what always happens, right? The visionary leaves the office, the idea dies. And as you can see, we are the only ones right here. Look, man, like this is millions and millions of dollars in funds invested right here and it has all been put under the carpet. Tinapra's downfall was largely because of lack of interest in tourism by administrations after the Donald Duke tenor. This is a monorail right here at the Tinapa Business and Leisure Resort. I mean, it's a project that a lot of money was put into it, but it never kicked off. It's all covered in dust. These are things that when you go to other part of the world, you're going to pay money to get on in this experience. And I don't know how they are going to recover the money that was um, invested to build or develop this monorail, you know? That's just the situation of things right here at Tinapa. So, it was on this street where the popular Calabar Carnival used to take on, right? So, they're going to block up the whole street and everybody's going to leave their cars at home and just 
dressed very beautifully and hit the, the, the road, you know. It was actually the one of the biggest street parties in the world and the biggest street party in Africa, right? Uh, it attracted a lot of people, actually. Over two million people would come to Calabar just to participate in that event, right? The carnival was held every December and was also declared by the then governor, Mr. Donald Duke, as an activity to mark the Christmas celebration. He wanted to use the Calabar Carnival as a way to bring people onto Calabar so they could come and experience the paradise city. The annual carnival has lost its appeal, glamour and colour. The carnival used to be Nigeria's most anticipated end of the year's event, but not anymore. The show has been discontinued by the current administration for lack of funding. This place is called Marina Resort, right here in Calabar. The Marina Resort in Calabar sits on a great historical site, the Watermouth of Calabar. It stands near the Old Slave Street site, where 30% of the slaves that left Africa were deported from years ago. Okay, Marina Resort um, has its own heritage uh, as regards um, slave trade and um, other trade activities. Yeah. The resort was built in 2007 as a notable recreational and learning destination to promote tourism in Calabar. You see, when we came here like five, six years ago, you would have at least 200 people come here every day. And it was generating money, you know. So some of the business started leaving because another administration came. This administration actually made everything very worse. Because as at, as at this point, there is literally nobody coming here. They saw us at the gate and the security men, they were happy to get 100 now from us because they really don't have pressure on us anymore. This is total neglect, you know, from the original plan. Today, monthly visit has dropped to almost no one showing interest in visit in 2022. So what has changed over, over the years? Over the, I think it's the interest of the government. So the government are not interested in this? Yeah, because for me, if you ask me, tourism is a huge foreign exchange. Every year, we run to Dubai. Okay? But why can't we revamp this facility yeah. and make it a hub of activities yeah. in the whole of Africa? Um, you agree with me that government does not have business in business. Mm. So if you ask me, this place should have been leased out to season, private yeah, season tourism experts to take, so take over this place and make it a going concern. This is the state of deterioration. Yeah. This is the state of deterioration of this state. The reason for making this video is not to talk down on the state or its government, but to reveal how corruption and poor leadership has ruined the once flourishing state, Cross River. So right behind me, you have the Mary Slazor a runabout and just above it you have the Mary Slazor statue. So um, this monument was actually built here in memory of her because she was the one that stopped the killing of twins right here in, uh, in, in Calabar. So before now, whenever, before now, whenever, our dustbin, what thing happened? Our dustbin, it's happen? smelling, it's smelling, it's killing people. What happened to the dog? The, uh, the order is killing people. So we are asking the governor, please, he should try and uh, pay the workers. He should be backing it. Yes, another thing, the government should try and, and uh, invest some investment for the youth. Because the youth are not doing anything. So many youth are jobless. Here in Calabar? Here in Calabar. Payment of salary. They are not paying. Yeah. For how many months now? So since Ayade come, what did he not do? Ayade, since Ayade, is in the government. I, 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 we have not seen anything that he has done. Hmm. We have in not eight seen years. in eight years. We have not seen no more carnival. Nothing. The state is just, just like that. Wow. Nothing is even moving. The government should try and put things in places so that at least the state to provide to provide job. 
Cross River is beautiful and has one of the most unique landscape in Nigeria and has the potential to become a tourism hotspot in Africa. I hope this video has been able to spark something for us to see the possibility that tourism can bring to a state and a nation. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos regarding to tourism, travel and real estate. How far now? You, you just entered the state? I just entered. I just the... Oh, you just entered? Who advised you? I see I'm online. The pictures are nice. Oh, this online, they deceive you. Now, why person go go to a woman for online? You come, what's your other person? What you got? Ah, uh ah, -uh, my brother, you are welcome to our state. Oh. How, how many days you want to stay? Um, how many days are you for advice? Make I stay? My brother, no stay. Oh. No, come where they go now. Eh? Even, yeah. you, know, you know, you when I talk, say, even we say, with the plan come out. Our governor, they, they use big English, they confuse yeah. us. So, <laughs> we don't get light. <laughs> one month now, we even celebrate our one month anniversary. <laughs> we are going to the two months now. <laughs> no light. Are you serious? Mm, but we go vote, oh. we go vote. We must do our voter's card. This, hey, hey. I'm mm. actually making a documentary about, you know, tourism in Cross River, right? Tourism? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't, now just for a subject, they teach us now. I don't even so, try they teach tourism now for secondary school. <laughs> They don't scrap and the way they scrap carnival. They scrap carnival? Uh, you, oh, you, oh, sorry, may not be like, mm, no. They scrap carnival? Yeah, see carnival online, like the past one, you can watch the highlights and be happy. <laughs>